guys, welcome once again to the one coin only arcade challenge. As always, we're going to be taking a classic arcade game and we're going to see how long we can last off one playthrough. And today that game is Wardner. I'm very keen to show you. So we're going to get straight into it straight away. So you can see you need to enter your name at the start. Um, so pretty much straight away you can tell it's kind of an RPG experience because what other game asks you to enter your name? Not many. Um, but it's actually another hybrid. I throw that game out a lot, but it is. It's a platformer slash action RPG. And it's a really fun experience. You can see there's a couple opening cutscenes here you can't avoid. Um, so you'll see what the story is for yourself. But basically, you're out with your girl. How you're doing? And then all of a sudden, she randomly gets turned into a crystal ball and kidnapped. And you need to go get her back. And here we go. We've got the story. You know, travel along. And uh, this game came out by Tato in 1987. They were really on a roll with their games at this point in time. You'll probably remember another one of their cult classics, Raston. Fantastic game. Uh... While this is a completely separate experience, it still feels very advanced in its presentation. The graphics are amazing. Uh, the, the backgrounds in particular are really, really detailed, and I love how they scroll along with the character and kind of give that sense of immersion. Um, I just feel like this was a really advanced art style for 1987. Uh, this game looks absolutely fantastic. And uh, one thing that's really good about this game is how playable it is too. Like the controls are basic, just like all other platformers. Um, you've got an attack button where you'll shoot these fireballs. They're pretty effective. They, they, they feel like they hit hard enough. And then you've also got a jump button. So it's pretty simple. Um, and as you travel along, you destroy all these enemies. There's a lot of obstacles. This game is very, very tough actually. Um, not ghosts and goblins tough, but pretty close. And uh, in typical uh, action platformer form from the 1980s, you've got a, a timer in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And so you're encouraged to be careful, but with that time limit, you know, it's uh, it's like oil and water. It's not really a good combination. But uh, this game doesn't feel that notoriously difficult that you can't just keep practicing and not improve as you go along. That's one thing I really like about this game. It's got a it's definitely hit that fine line that games do between I guess you could say pleasure and pain like while it's difficult um, it's not game breaking by any means and every time you play you just get a, that little bit better every time so the whole experience is incredibly rewarding in this game and we've got a really challenging platforming segment coming up real soon so I'll probably have my head down a bit there's all sorts of cool boss battles in this game too and uh just lots of cool things you can do like it's a very basic style action RPG but everything it does is really really effective as you can hear the music's nice too with the graphics not only are the graphics good but the environments are always changing giving you something really cool to look at every time you traverse the kingdom it's another cool thing there we go lots of different ways you can interact with the background too whether it be uh, beanstalks or clinging onto that bird or whatever there's just always something cool to do just uh, just the level of, level of detail in this gameplay is just absolutely amazing. I love the experience. And I'm very much looking forward to doing a long play eventually. So we've got our first boss battle here, I think. You kind of have to uh, preemptive your jumps a little bit. Because things do fly at you pretty quickly. I don't know how many hits these bosses take. A lot by the looks of it. So I made it, that's a relief. See, I've played this game once or twice before. And now, uh, we've got the shop. I wonder what we can buy. A moon sword. Oh, I don't have enough gold. A star sword. Look, we'll take the star sword. I didn't know you could use swords in this. I've only been throwing fire at the moment. Okay, well, can we leave? Oh, we'll just walk out here. Keen to see what his weapons are now. That's really weird. Like, I'm shooting a fireball in a different way. So, they call it a sword. And I'm shooting... Okay, I'm not going to try and explain it. It is what it is. The patterns of these bats are challenging kind of throw you off your concentration. It's a pretty well-designed enemy, actually. He 
you kill these things or you have to jump over them? Yeah, that'd be right. And there's platforming 101 here. Nothing over the top challenging yet. Click that treasure so we can get yet another fireball sword or whatever it's called. Yeah, honestly guys, if you're into platformers, this is one of the more addictive ones you're going to play. And I would recommend this game if you enjoyed Raston as well, even though it's a bit more cutesy. Don't let the presentation fool you, there's lots of game here. Oh, damn. <laughs> Little bit careless, but guys, this was Wardner. It is a fantastic game, and thank you once again for joining us for the One Coin Only Arcade Challenge. If you like what we do, please share, subscribe, tell your friends about us, and we'll see you next time.